Hello, welcome everyone. My name is Lisa Falsko, President and CEO of the Alaska World Affairs Council. And it is such a pleasure to be featuring our very own Alaska Ninja Warrior, Nick Hansen, who is going to talk today about how Alaska Ninja Warrior is changing the world. We are so thrilled to have you, Nick. I can't wait to hear your presentation today. It's about 45 degrees and sunny here in Anchorage, Alaska. We had our first frost last night. I hope it is beautiful and the air is clean wherever you are around the world. Please say hello in our chat feature. Let us know where you're calling in from. And I hope you join us here at the end. We're going to have a Q&A section at the end of Nick's presentation, as well as a special guest uh, appearance. So you'll definitely want to tune in until the end. This is gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, during the Q&A, we will read off some questions. So if you'd like to write down your question in the chat function, please do so. We'll read some of those off. We'll also call on some of you directly. If you want to ask a question directly, just let us know in the chat feature and we'll go ahead and call on you to do that too. Uh, we would like to thank our sponsors. We are one of 95 councils around the United States and it's because of members and supporters that make it possible for the Alaska World Affairs Council to be doing what we do today. A big shout out today to the Atwood Foundation, to the Siri Foundation, to the Rasmussen Foundation, and Alaska Public Media, who is recording our program today for addressing Alaskans, and also the Junior, Juno World Affairs Council that is a partner of ours. And we have Carl Broderson, who's waving there. I'm going to unmute you, Carl. Oh, I'm having a difficult time. If you could try to unmute yourself there, there. It work. How is it going for the Juno World Affairs Council? Uh, quietly. Normally we don't do much in summer anyway, but this has been such a dismal weather pattern down in the Southeast for the last six months that I think we could have had a show every single day and people would have actually attended. <laughs> well, Carl, I'm so excited that you're able to join us and your folks are able to join us. This is the first time that Alaska has been able to come together, our Juno World Affairs Council and the Alaska World Affairs Council here in Anchorage. So really, really great to see you and thanks for joining Carl and all your people. Thank you very much. Happy to be partnering. You will see on, sorry, I just cut you off. A little technical difficulty. Keep on chatting with us, Carl. We are, uh, we are recording today's program. So if you have any technical difficulties like that, please just let our technician guru, Siobhan Choi, uh, down at a private message in Alaska World Affairs Council Administrator, let her know what's going on and she'll help you through any type of issues that you're having like the one I was just having. We have a lot of programs coming up. I wanna quickly just mention a, a few of those. You'll find them all on our website on alaskaworldaffairs.org. And you'll see that we have next coming another up and coming Alaskan whose name is Zach Brown. Dr. Zach Brown is going to be talking about trekking the Ala climate change from action. Um, Actually, that's not exactly. Trekking the Climate Crisis from Knowledge to Action. And this is a program we were going to feature in the spring. We had to move it to the fall now, and we're doing it through Zoom, which is really great because in the past 60 plus years, the Alaska World Affairs Council has been bringing the world to Alaska. And now for the first time with this platform, we can bring Alaska to the world, like our program today with our Ninja Warrior, Nick Hansen. We're super excited about that. And we're really glad you're tuning in from wherever you are around the world. You'll also see on another program, Dr. Young Zhao, backed by popular demand, October 4th. Dr. Zhao grew up in China and he is an educator here in the United States and Australia. He's a prolific author. He is a guru when it comes to education and what that should look like today and in the future. And he is going to talk about the Future of Education in a Post-Pandemic World. That's Dr. Young Zhao. But that's not it for October. We're busy. We're having our World Wiz Pub Quiz Trivia Night. Uh, it's going to be now via Zoom. There'll be great prizes October 16. Join that. More information on our website. And we also are going to have a members-only event with Her Royal Highness uh, Rima Al Saad, who is the Saudi Arabian ambassador to the United States. And that date is coming soon. It's going to be in October. And if you're not a member, please join the Alaska World Affairs Council and support our organization. And as a thank you, we have this special program with Her Royal Highness Rima Al Saad. For optimal viewing, uh, please put your 
program or your screen on speaker view so you can see everything that's going on today, including our speakers. And with that, I'm going to turn over the microphone to a wonderful woman who is uh, works for Bering Straits Native Corporation. She's also on the board of directors for the Alaska World Affairs Council. I call my friend Miriam Ahrens. It's so great to see you. She is going to be introducing our speaker today. Miriam, if you'd like to introduce our speaker, the floor is yours. Thank you, Lise. It's a huge honor. Um, again, um, yes, Miriam Ahrens. I work at Bering Straits. My family is actually from Unalakleet on my mom's side. Um, so I've, um, I've known of Nick for many years. He's a huge inspiration to me personally. I can't say enough good things about him. He's a community leader. He um, is a coach. He's a motivational speaker. Um, he's done all sorts of really cool things in addition to being an Eskimo ninja. Um, he talks about suicide awareness, which is a really difficult topic. Um, and just this last spring, he did a series on working out at home during the pandemic, which I thought was really cool. So um, Nick, um, you are a, a huge asset to our region. We're really proud of you and um, we can't say enough good things about you. So I'm gonna turn that over to, over to Nick. And that's all right. Can y'all first of all, can y'all hear me? Just throw a thumbs up. I'm looking at all the screens, making sure everyone can hear me. Okay. Right on. Cool. Um, I was actually sitting at my brother's house and his internet was terrible. So I had to like go park in this parking lot because the LTE was like twice as good to get streaming. So I'm really glad that it's working right um, and making sure it's all good. Um, I am going to, I'm going to speak a little bit about a few different things. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on in our world today. Um, you know, this is the Alaska World Affairs. So, I mean, there's so many different things that we can talk about. Um, and I just kind of want to bring my perspective to all of that. Um, but at the same time, at the very end of it, um, um, Lise talked about putting questions in the, in the comment section. Don't hesitate to do that. And we can moderate those if we need to, to make it more uh, fluid and stuff. Um, but I want to make it a dialogue. So, if there's anything that comes up during while I'm, I'm speaking or if you have any questions, don't hesitate to throw them in the comment section and make sure that you, you, um, you, know, you definitely start the dialogue with me and don't be shy. Like if you have a question, type it up. If you have a question, put it in there um, and uh, we'll, we, you know, we'll pick and choose which ones, or Lisa is going to pick and choose which ones she wants to throw out there. Um, and maybe some of them will be identical to another one or have the same concept and maybe I'll answer more than one. Um, with a single answer. But I just want to make sure that I open up that dialogue with everybody because right now during this time where a lot of us are, you know, wondering what's going to happen with COVID and wondering what's going to happen in the world, especially with elections coming up and all the different things, um, you know, those are things that we're, you know, we're struggling through and we're struggling with. And, um, you know, if you have any kinds of questions about my opinions and my perspective on all of that, um, then uh, don't hesitate to ask because the building a community and having that um, constructive dialogue is what's really important in our in our especially during this time but you know really what motivates me every single day um, to continue to try to inspire young people to do is that to think critically think for themselves come out and do their research and really kind of you know make sure that they're staying strong in all these different topics that are going on especially in the current events of today on um, that being said uh, just a little bit of a backstory from who, for who I am um, uh, Mir Miriam just introduced me a little bit. She's from Unalakleet as well. So uh, I was born and raised in uh, in Unalakleet. Uvanga Nick Ilugutiak Hansen and Upiagurunga Unalaklim and Utkiavig Minlu Alaska me. I'm an Upiak Eskimo and uh, um, I'm uh, born and raised in Unalakleet, but my family on my mom's side also comes from Barrow. So I'm part of the Hobson crew up in Barrow. Um, but then on my dad's side, you know, I'm mixed European. Uh, a little bit of a mostly Italian, a little bit of Scottish uh, mixed in there. Um, the Scottish really comes out in my sister. Uh, if you ever find on internet, social media, whatever, a picture of me and my sister side by side, you'll wonder how the heck are they siblings? Because she's got bright red hair. She's got green eyes. Um, she looks like the princess from uh, that Scottish movie, the Scottish Disney movie, you know, with the big hair. And she's got two little twin brothers. Um, I forget what the movie's called, but that's basically my sister. Or if you've ever watched the movie Storks, um, the, the, the human in Storks, that movie, that, that's my sister. So uh, definitely, um, you know, it shows a lot more in her, but she's just as much Inupiat as I am. So um, it's, it's just really cool contrast. Um, I want to speak to that a little bit because um, 
you know, growing up in Unilocleat, um, I was, I suffered through a lot of things and it kind of leads me to how I got to become who I am today. The, Amer the you know, I'm on American Ninja Warrior. I'm on, I'm the Eskimo Ninja, which is where you guys might have recognized me from. I'm actually competing Monday night. So if you guys are looking to tune in, tune in Monday night, uh, eight, seven central on NBC. I think it's right after KTUU channel two news, um, is when the episode comes on and, uh, I'll be competing right there in the middle of the season and, um, of the, of the episode, I believe, I mean, and um, so it, in order to get to where I'm at today, I've been competing on the show for six seasons and I've been competing, um, you know, in different various sports throughout my entire life, you know, the World Eskimo Indian Olympics and the NYO games. Um, but before all of that is kind of where my story began. Um, I moved to Unilocleat when I was, you know, four years old five years old. And when I got there, the kids in Unilocleat, they would beat me up and bully me because I would try to tell them that I'm Alaska native and uh, they wouldn't believe me because of the color of my skin. I, I don't, you know, I'm white. I look white. Um, so the kids wouldn't believe that I was Alaska native, even though, you know, I knew it and my, and my mom knew it and my family knew it. And, uh, you know, it just kind of became this thing I struggled with growing up. And then, so one of my outlets was sports. It was, you know, all the different sports that I had, my coaches, my positive role models, my positive mentors and my teachers and in my uncles that took me out hunting and those things. And so I started reaching out to those for, you know, to pull and to draw knowledge from. And, uh, and eventually the kids started to realize like, oh, this, this guy is, uh, he's actually really athletic. We kind of have to, you know, make sure he can shoot the ball on Tuesday night or Friday night, whenever our games are. So we have to make sure that he's okay. Um, so they kind of stopped bullying me over the course of the years. And then I became one of the top athletes in my community. Um, um, and then, uh, you know, over the course of my lifetime, you know, I started to bond with these guys. I started to, you know, my, they're my basketball teammates. They're my, um, they're my cross country running teammates and I'm, you know, we're, we're sleeping in schools together on air mattresses and in and, and sleeping bags. And that's the way that we kind of, you know, we started to get to bond and um, you know, we're in the locker room all the time. We're in huddles and, and uh, timeouts. And so we started to get closer and closer. And um, you know, next thing you know, what some of those guys that would beat me up became mentors of mine, they became friends and brothers and people that I look up to, and, um, and I also look, you know, they looked up to me as well. And we, and we fed off each other in order to grow. Um, and then, you know, over the course of my lifetime, um, let's fast forward to six years ago when I first got on American Ninja Warrior. One of the biggest questions that I get is, what does it take to be a ninja? What is it, you know, I'm, when I'm in front of schools or in front of a bunch of kids, I'll always open up the answer, you know, the, the question and the Q&A portion. And one of the most important questions I get is what does it take to become a ninja warrior? And, um, and uh, so for me, obviously it took a lot of different, you know, it takes working out, you know, four hours a day in the gym or in some sort of gym that you create of your own, which is what I had to do in Unilocally because we don't have access to facilities. So I built my entire course out of driftwood that I found on the beach and just stuck in the beach on the ground. Um, so, you know, one, the, the, um, the, obviously it takes a lot of training and patience and dedication, but you know what it really takes. And this is the, where, what I drive home with the students and with the kids that I, you know, motivate and speak to, or the conferences that I go to where, you know, you know, they're asking me to come and really kind of share what I believe in. Um, the, what it really took was knowing who I am, all that bullying and all that getting beat up and all the different things. Um, you know, the one thing that really kept me going, I could have easily gave up. I could have easily quit. I said, I could have said, no, I don't want to join sports. Those boys are going to bully me in the sports as well. You know, I'm, I don't need to spend more time with these guys that are beating me up. Right. Like spending another extra hour and a half every day in practice with them is just going to make it worse. I could have gave up and not done any of that, but I knew who I was. Uh, um, you know, that was reinforced through my coaches. I was reinforced through my family and my, and, and my grandparents and my uncles and that, you know, changed the game for me. And that's a cultural aspect that we have as an Inupiaq people is being proud of who we are, knowing who we are and being strong in who we are and being proud of our Inupiaq culture and, and sharing that with people and, and telling stories and sharing dances and sharing our cultural games. And, and, you know, that's a big part of our life and having that mutual respect with anybody that we come across. Um, 
so you know I knew who I was and it started to shine and in, in, uh, in the other guys and then the guys started to find and discover who they were and they started to realize okay this is who he is this is the true this is the true Nick but over the course of those lives the um over the course of my life um, you know, we taught Miriam kind of spoke about me talking about suicide. And, you know, that's a big part of my life. Um, it, because I have actually lost 16 of my basketball teammates and classmates to alcohol related deaths and suicides. Um, and, you know, one of one of the things that, um, that I think ha has created that perpetual um, mental suffering that a lot of men go through in in the villages is it's a a loss they they I, I feel like and this is again this is all my opinion this is all what i've observed over my course of my life and the things that i've experienced but what i feel like is a lot of men in villages they kind of lose their purpose um they kind of lose their purpose you know back in our cultural days it was the men go out um you know they go out, they go hunting for an entire day or sometimes weeks, a week. And they're out there with a purpose. They're going out there to provide for their family. They're going out there to, um, you know, to, con to contribute to their community by providing food, whaling. You know, one whale will feed our entire community. They go out and get ugruk or, or walrus. Uh, ugruk is bearded seal, by the way, for those of you that may not know. Um, but and they go out and they get an, a 900 pound ugruk and that's gonna feed their entire community. Um, you know, that was our purpose as men and the women, you know, they had their purpose. They were there to take care of the men. They were there to take care of the people, um, the, the kids and the young people. And then also sew the, sew the clothes together, make sure that there was, you know, the oil lamp didn't go out, you know, uh, make sure that we packed up the sled properly. You know, they, it was a, it was a symbiotic relationship between the men and women. And nowadays with, uh, you know, with modern culture kind of coming into play, the Western civilization coming in women now are being you know they're getting their they're becoming the ceos and they're becoming the you know the the provider some men don't even have that pro that you know they're they're the um they're the stay-at-home dad or they're you know they're the stay-at-home um and it's and in our culture and in, in upia culture that's a di completely different stigma than what we had before you know it was always the men go out and they grind and they get on the grindstone and it wasn't necessarily bring home the bacon type vibe right like in western culture that that's the word was bring home the bacon um that's not that's not what it was in our culture it was just that the men would you know that we were able to jump 30 three feet across icebergs in order to get across and we were able to you know, fight those storms and, and, and withstand that pain. And then out of a respect for our women, we didn't want them to have to go through that. That was just kind of what we did, you know, it was just kind of understood that we don't let the women go and do that because we want to make sure that they're taken care of. We'll go get frostbite and we'll go potentially fall into hyper, hypothermic water in order to make sure that we're providing for that family. And, and we'll take our, our 14 and 15 year old boys out there and teach them how to do it as well. And there was just a men's, there was that, there was that understanding between the two. But nowadays in our culture, um, Western cultures come into play, like I said, and it's kind of created this, um, what I think is a, is, a, is, a, is a loss of sense of purpose for some men. Not all men, um, obviously, because there's still those men that get out there and they get after it and they're ambitious and they're motivated. Um, take myself, for example, I don't want to try to toot my horn or sound conceited or anything like that, but I had to find some way to motivate myself to be, you know, there's not a lot of infrastructure in our villages and there's not a lot of opportunity for jobs and um, school. I'm going to be honest with you guys. <laughs> school wasn't me it just wasn't me being stuck in books and I've worked for I had a um, I have a civil engineer I'm a civil engineer and um, all the different internships I did through college was were with Alaska Pipeline, ConocoPhillips, BP I did a lot of different things but I worked for NASA at the Goddard Space Flight Center all the way on the other side of the country and every single job including NASA was the same to me it felt the same it was always autocad it was always surveying it was always kind of the same it was running numbers crunching numbers making sure that the steam lines weren't cracked it was all these different things that was that were the same to me it wasn't it were, there wasn't a lot of change or spontaneity and that's kind of who i am so um one day i'm back at home in unilocleet and an eighth grader 
an eighth grader in Unilocle, uh, I find myself, you know, hanging out with a lot of kids. Um, I'm a kid at heart. I'm young at heart. And that'll never leave me. And I find myself, you know, hanging out with a lot of kids in Unilocle because I watched my guys, my teammates, my, you know, I watched those guys not have parents there for them. Um, I've watched them have only a single mom and not have a dad or a father figure or a big brother figure in their life. And so when I moved back home to Unilocleet, I found myself being that big brother to a lot of kids in Unilocleet, being that uncle that's, you know, a safe place that they can go and speak with or go and, um, you know, let out some emotions to, or just come and play on my ninja course with me at one point or another. And when and, uh, six years ago, an eighth grader said, you should try out for Ninja Warrior. <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, okay. <laughs> and so that was that, spontan that spontaneity that I desired for so long and that, that, that motivation that I needed just someone to just say, hey, get up and try something new, something different. And I was like, wow, I never even heard of this show before. What is American Ninja Warrior? And, uh, and so he showed it to me and I was like, okay, let's build a warp wall. And he was like, sweet. And so we built a warp wall and I was like, man, what are the other obstacles that we need to have on this course? And he was like, oh, a salmon ladder. That's always on the show. So I built a salmon ladder. And next thing you know, I have 22 obstacles made out of driftwood on the out front in my front yard and 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 now it's a location on instagram you can type in eskimo ninja course on instagram or on facebook and it's a location it's actually like a place in in <laughs> recognized by facebook i guess that's something you can do anybody can set that up and somebody set that up for me but uh <laughs> it's like a place and the kids it's not like like in if you come from a village or if you come from a um a community that's really small and tight knit. There's always like a, do you want to go to the playground? You know, you want to go play out? That's like a phrase that kids say, you want to go playground or you want to go like to, in Nome, it would be, you want to go rec? You want to go to the rec? You know what I mean? Or go to the rec center. Um, so that's always like something that's said amongst kids. And now in Unilocleed, it's, do you want to go warp wall? Do you want to go to the warp wall? You want to go to the warp wall? Hey, do you guys want to go warp wall? And they'll come and knock on my door and say, Hey, do you want to go warp wall with us and do some training? And, you know, I take every opportunity when I'm not too busy to, to, um, you know, go and I, and I, and I share that time with them and I go and I motivate those young people to, to get up those warp walls and get stronger. Um, and I built uh, some smaller ones for the younger kids. So I have a 10 foot warp wall. I have a 15 foot warp wall and I have little hole cutouts dug out for all those kids that, you know, that I want to, you know, inspire them that show them like, Hey, look, you have options. I'm, I went to college and I did well in college. But I also became an athlete and I did and I'm doing well as an athlete. And, you know, I want to make sure that those kids have the understanding that it's an option for them. There, there's more than just, you know, in, in villages, it's basketball is life. That's that's kind of a big deal. Basketball, basketball, basketball. But you have to be six foot two and, you know, yoked out of your mind and a really great IQ in order to go and move forward in a basketball career. So I want to make sure that kids have that opportunity to say, hey, look, there's more options for you out there. Um, so I do that every single day. And as um, from a cultural perspective and a cultural standpoint, um, you know, I feel like as a half Inupiaq Alaska native, and I'm going to kind of dive into the politics and a little bit of the, uh, the, um, the uh the civ the uh the cultural perspectives because a lot of people in 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 and i'm gonna go from um hold on a second i'm kind of gathering myself here on this one because i'm changing complete directions here the the entire backstory of my life has drawn me into american ninja warrior and i want to change it up a little bit now because one thing that's happened lately in 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 our country has been the blm movements you know, elections are coming up. So we're one, you know, it's, it's either you're for it or you're against it. You're with us or you're not with us. It's always seems like there's always this like red line. And there's this, there's this, like, there's this line that's drawn. A friend of mine just posted a really great video and it was like, he said, I'm independent. And I guess independent when you're voting is another category that you're in. But to me, independent means that you think critically and you kind of like make a, your best judgment, whether it's Democrat, Republican or otherwise. But I've noticed that and he posted it and I just I just gave him a thumbs up on it was because he said. It's almost like if you're not Democrat, then you're 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 against everything or if you're not Republican, you're against everything or if you're not left wing, you're right wing. And if you're not right wing, you're left wing. There's no like gray area. There's no like middle ground. 
where you can just be a critical thinker and you can just actually like research who's who and and do some not get some knowledge about being you know oh this person has really great morals and i really like what they're saying and i'm gonna vote for them because they have really great morals and i appreciate that and then if you go and vote for them it's like oh you voted for that person blah 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 anyways uh, i could go we could go for days on that kind of stuff and it could really turn into some heated stuff so let's just skip it but as that that's been that, that video he posted kind of really hit home to me because I'm the gray area. I find myself being that gray area for a lot of different things. And one of those things to me is the contrast and the, and the, the, the relationship between Alaskan native culture and Western culture. And I feel like I'm that literal bridge between the two. I'm literally the bridge between the indigenous community and the community that is your mixed that is European, Caucasian, or Western civilization and what what that's been. And there are so many great things because I, I get a lot of Alaska Native people that come up to me and say, oh why is this? Why do you believe in this? Why do you believe in that? And they get really mad because they feel that our culture was stolen from us. Now don't get me wrong. It was beaten out of us. It was, it was literally take our men were literally taken from our communities and brought to boarding schools. And those are things that have happened in our community because of the missionaries coming in and taking out our men and, 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 and forcing God and religion on us, which I totally believe in. I'm a, I'm a believer and a follower of God. If you're not, that's okay. I don't, I don't hold judgment against you in any way, but I am a believer and a follower of God. So I'm again, that, that literal bridge between the two and in today's society in today's communities a lot of things are trying to come back we're trying to bring our culture back and you know and i think that being you know half white and half mixed half uh Inupiaq, i have that perfect literal bridge between the two i can speak my language i can understand my language when my apple calls up in barrow he talks to me in Inupiaq and he teaches me my language. But I also understand my Italian roots, my mixed European roots, that my Scottish roots and where I come from and, and all of those things. And I understand that it is a, it is a, um, it's a, it's a blend. It's a mix that has created me to be who I am today. And that's what really matters in the end. We can all try to argue about, um, you know, all lives matter, black lives matter, Hispanic lives matter, indigenous lives matter. We can argue about all of those different things. But at the end of the day, if we don't understand who we are, and if we don't really truly know who we are, then how can we truly make a difference for those people? How can we truly make a difference for those people that are black that are being, you know, exposed to police brutality on a whole different level? And how can we truly understand them and, 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 you know, if we don't really understand ourselves first, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, you know, we have to truly know who we are before we can open up our mindset to say, this is who I am. I'd love to understand who you are and, and, and really gather that information so that we can um, create a relationship where we understand each other. And in today's society, with all the different things that are going on with, um, with the movements and, and the, uh, you know, the the um the things that uh that are causing a lot of negativity and a lot of animosity towards different ways and and you think about it from a political standpoint people are arguing on instagram and on social media that it's an agenda and then there's the conspiracy theorists that are saying oh it's just all fake and covid's not even real <laughs> all these different things that are happening and it's like but you know come on you guys let's be let's be humans about it and let's think about what we're actually doing here and as an Alaska native um, that has experienced, you know, racism on a whole new scale, um, you know, those boys that beat me up every single day, they were racist. They were argue, they were beating me up because they were, because I look white. And, um, you know, I just found, found a way to kind of bridge that gap between the two cultures. And I think that that's something that is very important because in America, we are the most diverse we're the most diverse that as it gets there's you, you think about anybody from hawaii from you know 
from the Hispanic culture down in like the lower 48. And then the, you think about the black communities, the white communities, the Southern communities compared to the Northern communities. The, I mean, we're so diverse when it comes to everything in Alaska is a totally different diversity we're we're like we're we're everything i'm I'm sitting in wasilla and i know for sure i just seen a truck go by and i'm like i've got a friend that has a truck that's lifted that and he comes up and he talks to me like this and he's from alaska but he's been born and raised alaskan but he's got an accent like you know what i'm saying like we're so diverse and everything is is just so you know it's just a cultural cultural melting pot that you know the most important thing to me and the value that i that I cherish the most is, um, is understanding who we are. And each and every one of us in this room or on this Zoom meeting right now, um, we come from different backgrounds, we come from different lives, but, but we're all human in the end and we're all together and we're here to help and support each other in the end. And um, you know, that's what it's truly all about. Um, so I wanna open up this time though, because I, I talked a lot and I shared a lot and it, and it went, whoa, way over here, left side and went, whoa, way over here to the right side. And I saw a lot of faces, I was scrolling through, I don't know if you saw my hand, I was scrolling through and I saw a lot of faces going, whoa. And I saw a lot of faces going, yes. You know, so I definitely want to open up the conversation now. I'm hoping that Lise took some um, notes on the questions that were asked in the chat box, if any of you guys had any. Um, so. Now's, now's the chance, the opportunity. Let's open up this dialogue and let's get this going. Thank you, Nick. Yes, if you would like to ask a question directly, just let us know in the chat box. I'm gonna read a couple of questions and I've got a couple of questions. First, I wanna say thank you, Nick, so much for sharing your personal story and your professional story. Very inspiring. And so I want to know, now that you have come from Unilaclete and hit this world stage as the Eskimo Ninja, uh, what, how are you using this platform to, to inspire others or do something? What does this platform mean to you and what are you doing with this platform? Um, you know, I think that um, the most important thing to me um, as this platform is to, to make sure that the youth have a positive role model to look up to. There's a lot of people in Alaska, um, in rural Alaska, a lot of kids that don't, that don't have opportunity, that don't have... Um, <laughs> Um, sometimes they're stuck in a home with seven other siblings and they are living with their grandparents because alcohol is a very sensitive topic in rural Alaska. And, and a lot of kids, my mom was an alcoholic, so I've known from personal experience what it's like to have nobody to go home to because my mom wasn't there, literally, you know, like she was physically out of it. And so um, I want to make sure that kids have a positive, healthy role model to look up to. And I'm using my platform to continue to strive for that, to continue to tell kids, hey, look, you can be, I'm Alaska Native just like you. I was, grew up in a village just like you. I experienced all of these things just like you. And look at, look at my story. I'm, I'm successful as an athlete. I've never drank. I've never smoked. I've never done any drugs in my entire life. I've never done anything like that. And, um, you know, I want to just show kids that it's possible to overcome those challenges. That, that's a lot along the line of a question that came from Laura Sturdivant. And she said, how do you help Alaskan youth discover their purpose? Have you found a way to help Alaskan youth find their purpose? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, well, I think that um, purpose is purpose is in the individual, right? Like your purpose is in your, within yourself and you're the only real person that can that can find it and find that depth of the purpose. So what I try to do to help those kids find that purpose is to, is to let them be themselves. I don't say no, I never say no to kids. I never say, you know, you have to do this this way or you have to do this that way. I'm always kind of just like allow them to have their space and to show me who they are. And then I, when I ask that question, hey, how are you doing? Think about that question for a second. Think about that greeting for a second. Hey, how are you doing? People go, oh, I'm good. How about you? Oh, I'm good. And then it's like, all right, see you later. You know, you walk on. I turn that question, I, I bring that question back into reality and, and lit, uh, you know, literacy. It's how are you doing? You're asking them a question. I want to find out. You know, I don't want to just be, oh, good. So I dive deeper into their lives and, and I ask them and I say, hey, Let's go for a walk if you need to. Let's sit right here on the bleachers if you need to while other people shoot around. And, and then I really dive into their lives a little bit. And, and then I go, hey, look, man, you got this. And I give them that, you know, I give them that opportunity to be themselves. 
Okay, there are a lot of people who are so happy with you sharing this message. And I want to say thank you many times over for myself and all the people on this chat function. Uh, Jody Anderson says, thank you so much for doing all of this amazing work and that you do. She wants to know, how do you approach such difficult topics like suicide that most people view as taboo? How do you approach it that makes it so that you can talk about it? What a great question. Holy smokes. That's so provocative, like in so many different ways. <laughs> um, here's the thing. If we don't talk about it, we won't talk about it. And that's kind of the way that I take it. Suicide. Like, just say the word suicide and try to think like, ooh, you know, you kind of get a little of a chill. You said taboo, 100%. And what I'm trying to make, what I'm trying to do with my platform and with everything that I do and when I go out and I speak about it is suicide is a topic that needs to be discussed. The only real way that we can prevent suicide is to talk about suicide. We can't like go and try to sweep it under the rug. The guys that I've lost in my life, they swept it under the rug. They never once opened up about it. Like the, the, the latest one that we lost was, um, you know, he was 23 years old and, and you would have never expected him to be that guy. But then boom, all of a sudden he, he was gone. And it was like, what the heck? Like, and he was my basketball coach's son. So you would assume that at, with, a, with a great mentor, like my basketball coach as a dad, and the, and the things that the, he was a crab, he was a super successful crabber. He made probably like $50,000 a year just crabbing because he was so successful in the way that he did it. He was, um, he had his own boat, he had his own motor, he had his own crew. I mean, it was literally the, all the above. And then all of a sudden, boom, he was gone. So you, you never expected to be those guys. I mean, take me, for example, I have attempted suicide in my life. One of the guys that I lost really put me into a dark place. I found myself in a depression. I was going through a struggle with my girlfriend at the time. I was losing a lot of friends. I decided, you know what, I, this isn't a good time for me. And I decided I, I, I don't even wanna be here. So I rode my bike off the edge of a cliff, a uh, 200 foot cliff, about 80% grade. I rode my bike off the end of it thinking I'm gonna die and there's nothing that anybody can do about it and I don't care. Um, you know, obviously I'm still here. So uh, God had different plans for me. And um, you just never expect it. And, the, and what happened after that was I started to open up that dialogue. I started to open up that conversation with people, my family, my friends, and saying, hey, look, I got to a really dark place in my life. Let, can, can we talk about this? And my finding myself being more open to talk about it made me realize that I never wanted to be at that place again. And I, the more I talked about it, the more I realized that I was getting happier and I was getting like a weight was being lifted and, and my peers started to understand me more. And, and so um, that's really, that's really the toughest part is just being willing to say, suicide is a topic that we need to discuss the word suicide needs to not have a negative stigma anymore and that's what i want to create i want to create a positive stigma wrapped around it because the most important thing about to do about suicide if someone's ever saying hey i don't feel good to you guys like in this room right now on this zoom call if anyone's ever talking to you and you say hey how are you doing good say, oh, I really want to know, like, what's going on? You know, when you dive into that question a little bit more, then people will really start to open up and, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm just not afraid of it. I'm not afraid to say, Hey, have you been thinking about suicide lately? And, and I just have, have lost that fear of talking about the topic. Um, and I just bring it up. I'll bring it up in a very positive conversation. I mean, we're talking about it right now and I'll just bring it up in very positive conversations um, and I'll just kind of create, um, you know, I'll just create a space where suicide can be talked about. And that's kind of the most important thing we can do for those that are struggling with the thought process of what suicide, if, if suicide's an option for them. Okay. Let's, let's keep on talking about it, Nick, then I appreciate you willing to talk about this. There's more questions coming in through the chat feature and this is something that is universal. I think you're talking about how it's personal and it's with your friends and Alaska and outside of Alaska and the world, this is something that a lot of people struggle with. Here's a yep. question. It says, Nick, when, what can families, schools, and peers do to help reduce the number of suicides in our communities? We lost our oldest son to suicide in 1995. 
I am a lower 48 native, as was our son. So what can families, schools, and peers do to help reduce the number of suicides in our communities? Great, great question. Um, you know, the, <clears throat> the most important thing is, is, is what we talked about a second ago is that I'm Alaska native and I'm, I'm also Western culture. What Western culture has really brought to um, communities, I think, and is, is that um, what they call a nuclear family, I think it's called a nuclear family where there's a mom, there's a dad, there's a support system, and there's, you know, uh, an expectation. And nuclear families are very, they, they, you know, they're very important to our culture. But that's one thing that Western culture has brought to rural Alaska is that nuclear family mentality. Support system, a support system is really the most important thing that we can do as families, as teachers, as coaches, is that we're all in it together for the sake of this one kid or this one group of kids, this, this basketball team, this volleyball team, this tennis you know, these two tennis players, you know, whatever it might be, um, you know, the support system is really what matters the most. Everybody being on the same page and everybody willing to be open and understanding of somebody else's thought process. If a teacher comes to you as a parent, a lot of times teachers are, are, um, teachers are met with anger, you know, no, you don't know anything about my kid, this, that, and the other thing, but really that teacher might have a very great insight to something that you don't see in that child, or you don't see in your student, or you don't see in your kid. And they might be able to bring something as a basketball coach. I know for sure. I see things that parents don't see in kids. And so I bring that to those parents' attention right away. As a coach, it's my responsibility to bring things that I, uh, that I observe in kids and say, Hey, you know, so-and-so wasn't feeling really good at practice today. His shot was off. His free throws were just not on point. And usually he's an eight out of 10 free throw shooter. I think something might be going on. You might want to sit down with him. And we create that structure. We create that support system coming from a coach, coming from a teacher, coming from a staff member. And, um, and we're not afraid. We can't be afraid to address it. A lot of red tape is associated with, with um, schools and with um coaches there's a lot of red tape there's a lot of things we can't do we can't give hugs we can't do this and that and the other thing you know what I'm saying so we have to work in a way where we're working with the parents and the parents are willing to work with us and so I think just creating that support group and that support system is is the most important thing that we can do as parents teachers and uh, and coaches to help our kids um, prevent suicides as much as we can and and I just want to reiterate something I see here in the chat room. It says all of your work that you're doing, connecting people and ideas, is really helping heal 100 percent, 100 plus years of historical trauma. So thank you, Nick, for all that you're doing. Here's a personal question for you. Um, she says I'm a recovering addict and I'm mostly active with sports, but getting older and having trouble with being regularly active, with being motivated to keep a daily routine exercise wise or accountable to stick with it. Any suggestions? Um, yes, I actually have some great suggestions. Um, so uh, one thing that I've done is when I'm in the off season of Ninja Warrior, when we're not filming and I'm like, oh, I don't have to train. I find myself diving into Chunky Monkey Ben and Jerry's. I find myself going, you know what I mean? I'm going over to burger stop or tommy's burger stop in downtown anchorage which is one of the best burgers in the in the whole state of alaska and i find myself diving into all of those things that i'm not supposed to be eating because i'm supposed to be healthy and ninja warrior and i find myself also saying oh i don't have to work out today i i don't have to but here's the thing as a ninja the best i've ever placed is 12th place Obviously, the ultimate goal is to climb an 80-foot rope in stage four called Mount Midoriyama and win the show and be at the top of that rope and say, I made it from stage one qualifying round to the final stage, and I was able to climb that rope. So in order to accomplish that goal, I have to stay consistent. I have to stay consistent with my training. I can't find myself falling off the quote unquote, falling off the workout wagon, right? So one of the ways that I've done that is I have an Apple watch. Um, they are expensive, but it's one of the greatest tools that I use in my arsenal for training because 
um, one of the things that you do on Apple Watches is there's three rings. There's an activity ring, a stand-up ring, and, an, and uh, um, an active calories ring. And one thing that I do is I close my rings every single day. I set mine to a goal that makes me, forces me to do an extra workout. And you can do this on Fitbit. You can do this on any kind of app on your phone. There's apps on your phone for health, like to check, trace your steps. And one of the ways that I close my rings some days is I go out and I mow the lawn. It take, you know, I'm walking back and forth and I'm walking and I just go out and I mow the lawn or I go and I walk my dogs and I calculate those calories and I calculate those, that activity. And it's just something to get myself out and active every single day. But one thing that I do is right before I shower, I do a workout. It's like 25 push ups, 25 pull ups, 25 crunches. And it's just simple 25, 25, 25, 25, 25. And that's kind of the way that I do it. And it's a hundred, a hundred reps of something and it's a way that I do it right before I shower because I know that if I do it right before I shower I just got dirty and now I can get clean and it's kind of my way to kind of remind myself every single time before I do a workout so the 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 way that you find yourself falling out of routine is by saying uh and then you know instead of taking ah uh, that extra second go ah uh, nope and then just step stand right up um one of the best ways to get up out of bed in the morning, if you're, if you're not a morning person like me, is to just put your feet on the floor and stand up. And then you find yourself moving and you find yourself getting going. And so when you're finding yourself, you know, falling back into that, that like loss of uh, motivation or whatever, just put your feet on the floor, put your shoes on, tie them up, lace them up, go out and go for a walk. It doesn't have to be a five mile run. It doesn't have to be a, a bike ride for 500 miles. You know what I mean? It just has to be, and, and, and get up and go for a walk around the house. Go for a walk over to your friend's house, knock on the door and say, hey, I just wanted to say hi. Okay, later, I'm just getting active. Okay, bye. And walk back home. Um, whatever it is, just get up and um, and just put your feet on the floor and, and keep on going. Okay, the next, the next question is something that actually could be asked of you and our special guest uh, appearance. Do you see him on our screen or how is Grant coming in? I don't see him. He could be under one of these pseudonyms. Is he the biscuit? Is he JL3? Uh, that is an excellent question. Um, that is an excellent question. I mean, if, if he's coming, he'll be here for sure. Okay, um, so Grant, if you're here, please unmute yourself and let us know that you're here. Just jump right in. And if you can send him maybe a text Nick and, and let him know he can jump in anytime that we're ready for him. Yeah, for sure. Let me get on that. Uh, another cool feature about this Apple Watch is I can do that while I'm still on Zoom. So let me hit him up. The question is, can you do that multitask and hear my next question at the same time? Try, let's try it. Let's figure it out. Go for it. Okay. Hit me with that okay. question. Okay, so here's a question coming in. And this is this is really an interesting question of talking about sports, right? Is so this person says it really seems like a great way for kids and other people to use ninja warriors like you to see how they can overcome and achieve they can achieve things and overcome challenges right and now we're in a time of covid where maybe individual sport growth will be something that will be promoted because you know individualistic not with others and teams right so how do you protect this from some of the negative aspects of the pressure of competitive sports on kids? Mm, that is a good question. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer one question first. Grant just texted me. He said he needs the password for, to get it to log into the Zoom. Um, can you, is that something that that is like, cause I didn't need a password when I logged in. So I'm not sure. Like he, he said he needs a password to get on. Is that something that he needs? Let me look up the password really quick. Cause I could text that to him real fast. Um, <laughs> um, but you, you know, one of the coolest things about, and I think this is going to answer the question really well is I do the world Eskimo Indian Olympics. Um, and, uh, so the, the World Eskimo Indian Olympics, the most important thing about those games is sportsmanship. And sportsmanship is five, six, five, eight, one, zero. Got you messages. You can um, do two things at once. Or this is actually three things at once. You're talking, thinking, typing. 
Yeah, I'm doing it all. I hope I typed that in properly. I only saw the uh, chat there for a second. It's five six five eight one zero. I remembered it. All right, so I just sent him the text. Um, but sportsmanship is the is the foundation of the World Eskimo Indian Olympics because one thing that we do as Alaska Native people is we want to teach and and pass on our tradition and our cultural traditions, like down down through every you know generational 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 that's why we do it um and i think that one thing about american ninja warrior is that it's got the exact same mentality and if grant mccartney and uh it gets in here which he is my guy uh i'm pretty yeah. sure that he will agree 100 percent that uh sportsmanship and and helping support one another in anything that we do um, as ninjas is one of the most important values that we have. Um, so that competitive drive, I mean, at the end of the show, I'm, this is my best friend here, that Grant McCartney, the Island Ninja, who's wearing a Kingdom Ninja shirt, which means that he's hanging out with Daniel Gill, who's another ninja. <laughs> and he's gonna get weird with it. So just a warning to you guys, Grant McCartney is one of the weirdest dudes on the planet, but we love him. Um, I'm competing. I'm competing against him to try to win a million dollars. But at the end of the day, I don't want anyone to do better than me except him. I want him to win. And I want him to win a million dollars because I know he's going to give me some of it anyways. No, I'm just playing. He wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, bro. He, he might buy me a surfboard. Um, <laughs> but, you know, at the end of the day, we're trying to compete against each other. And for a million dollars, but at the same time, we don't want anybody else to do better than each other. Um, and that's, and you know, Grant can, can I don't, would you, would you agree with that Grant? Yeah, man, I think it's, it's a very odd thing. I came from playing all kinds of sports. So it also shocked me when I was there and like, uh, it shocked me not because I saw people doing it because I did it inherently without realizing when I started to cheer somebody on and go, yeah, I want you to do well. Uh, let's take Nick when I'm watching him go. I, I genuinely want him to do well. And, and I can understand that internally because I'm like, oh, well, of course I want him to do really well because I want to do my best too. So if he does his best and, and he does that, great. Well, then I also hope, you know, I still want to do my best better than that. I, I don't want to go in a competition and be like, all everyone failed and so I could just easily walk to the finish. That's not the kind of win I want also, but yeah, I mean, I'm fighting a lot of feelings for just like, oh, I do want Nick to do well. Like he is my homie and we are friends because we met on the show, which is crazy. Um, you just inherently have these closer friendships and you have that kind of friendship. You're going to want to root for them. And I don't think that that takes away from the competitive nature in a negative way, because it's not like we're all like, no, no, you win. No, 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 you win. <laughs> No, so you win. It's like we all try really hard and train very hard, but we also genuinely want everyone to do well. Like we want our, our friends to do well, but like the reality is we all end up being friends. So we want everyone to do well. Yeah. So, um, Grant, one, one thing I just want to introduce you kind of to what we're doing here was worth the Alaska World Council. And it's, um, it's a nonprofit. And uh, what they do is they kind of like, we're, we took this opportunity to kind of talk about culture and share culture. And I know that um, a couple of years ago, I invited you up to experience some of our culture. Um, so I just wanted to kind of get your thought. Um, what, what do you think about Alaska native culture? Like just off the top of your head, what do you think about Alaska and what Alaska native culture is? Uh, I mean, there's so many things that flooded in my mind with being positive at first. I'm going to say it's rad. It's super rad because it's real, it's realistic, um, it's necessary. You know, the, the ways of gathering uh, food um, and hunting, it, it's not like, oh, we do this for sport. Like, it's literally to survive. Um, the, the types of clothing you make and the way that you create them is uh, sustainable and, and it's necessary. And that makes it even cooler uh, culturally to watch in on and go, oh, Nick's not like, oh, I need a new pair. Now, I'm not hating on any other cultures here, but I'm saying uh, I've been in Texas a little bit. All right. So I was like, I got these brand new ostrich boots. I'm like, cool, guy. <laughs> that's, that's sweet and all. And those are cool boots. But like, 
those are just for fashion's sake because you like it. And I'm not hating on that, but when someone goes, hey, I got these, you know, I, when we went up into his house and we built an igloo, which is something I wanted to personally do, and I had four hours of my toes stuck in the sand because I'm on my knee, or sand, in the snow because I'm, I'm from the islands. What do you expect? And I got my, my knees in the snow, my toes in the snow for four hours. We're putting these blocks together. My toes are freezing in my high performance uh, north uh, face boots that are supposed to be the warmest whatever, and they're not. And he goes and switches them out for some shoes made out of um, what they're beaver. What, what was it? <laughs> no, nah, no. Nah. So I went and grabbed my seal skin mucklucks. So he had like seal skin mucklucks with a seal skin sole. Um, and then it also had uh, seal skin fur on the inside. So it was like seal skin on seal skin. Um, and it was all made out of yeah. seal. And then it had like, a, um, yeah, it had seal, even a seal sole on the inside so that there was fur on the inside as well. So it was, it worked way better. I mean, it was amazing how well it worked. And, um, but the, the point being about the culture, it, it's amazing in that it's real, it's necessary, it's not, it, it's genuine. So that, that's great. And then also comes to mind eating the aged beluga whale, which was not freaking <laughs> any good. <laughs> not necessary. And I don't recommend it. Okay, I'm going to tell this story, you guys, because Grant brings up the best, the best moment of my life was the moment, and this, this video is on my Instagram page, it's on our YouTube channels, uh, you can find this video anywhere, but Grant yeah. and I, we, I introduced him to all the Nicobac, all our Eskimo food, and he's like, oh yeah, smoked salmon, I love this, and he's like all casual, like proud and stuff, and then he tries Unalik, which is boiled whale, and he tries a little bit of that, and he's like, oh, it's not too bad, it's not good, and then he goes and he dives into this aged beluga whale, which by the way, to everybody in here, my auntie is the most diehard Alaska native woman you'll ever meet in your entire life. She picks like 16 five gallon buckets of berries every year. So she has plenty of berries in the fridge. I mean, she is the woman to ask about anything. And she, um, my other auntie, not her, but my other auntie brought this batch of a beluga whale and it was fermented. And Grant goes and he's like, this is uh, the, the whale. He just says, this is the whale. And he goes down the hatch and he like, boom, pops it in like, a, like an hors d'oeuvre. And he just, the video is priceless. The video is Bro. priceless. <laughs> Bro, the deal is I, I eat whatever everyone else eats wherever I go. Like, I just kind of do what everyone does. I'm picking off, you know, the, the little walkthrough. We're getting all stuff. I see someone in front of me getting it. Not a lot of people. It's pretty open. You know, it's still got a lot of food in this tray on the buffet, which should have signaled something to me. But I was like, you know what? I'll grab one. I got one of the whale that looks this color. I'm going to get some of the whale that looks this color. And so I'm eating it. And I'm, we're filming it. And I'm genuine reactions. I'm great. I don't like to be negative, though, especially when I'm new to a culture. In Hawaiian culture, we have poi which is not great tasting right away. It's not something you're going to love. That's uh, a paste made from taro root. And so I know there's certain things in the culture that's going to be a little weird. I'm like, ah, cool, whatever. And I throw this thing in, and bro, my stomach was like, nope. But I had to <laughs> not show that. And so I just was like, <laughs> and I forced it down. Like, I fully went ahead and ate it anyways. And I played two, two and a half hours of basketball afterwards with my stomach in knots and uh <laughs> what are you gonna do you know sometimes you gotta try a little aged beluga the best part the best part uh, guys was that my auntie in the background says the the auntie that is the most diehard of all of us she goes i'm not even eating it <laughs> it, was oh, it, was, it was so funny but um yeah so grant mccartney definitely got a, a great opportunity to come and share some of our culture and, and experience a little bit about it. Lise, um, I just want to give this opportunity to you. Um, do you got, do you have anything for Grant? Um, Cause we, I mean, he's a special guest. He's here. This might be the one opportunity you guys get to meet the Island Ninja. Um, the Island Ninja's here. Uh, he came from Hawaii. He's originally from Tennessee. His dad played professional football. Um, so he comes from a long line. He also played rugby in college. So he comes from a long line of strong athletes. Um, and so, and he's also one of my best friends on the show. Um, but also just one of my best friends in life and uh, a very strong brother to me. So, Lisa, was there anything for Grant that you guys might have? 
Sure, sure. We're taking uh, questions from the chat room. Oh my gosh, we have to close it down now. We're getting at the one yeah. o'clock. But I'll, I have yeah. one more question for you, Grant. Thank you so much for joining yeah. us and for sharing yeah. your stories about food. You know, with the World Affairs Council, we travel all over the place and we try different things. And, and I tried stinky tofu in Taiwan and thought I was going to die. But it's one of the yeah. best experiences I've ever done. I highly recommend it. So thanks for sharing that story. <laughs> we asked Nick about you know, with this platform that you both have as the Island Ninja and the Alaska Ninja, you now have this platform that the world is listening to you. What do you use this platform to talk about? Yeah. Um, you know, I've gotten to do a lot of speaking and that was never the plan, right? Um, and, and one of the frustrating things about our world right now for me is there's more cameras and there's more uh, room for people to critique. You can, you have an online platform. So we literally have judging platforms ready. It's just, all you gotta do is swipe through Instagram, social media, Facebook, whatever it is. And you see a video, you see a topic, you see a post, you see a tweet and you go, let the judging begin, right? Like, and it just is all go for that. And, and that's tough because I know my influence is important and I, I realize the reach it has and, and so I, I think about this a lot. Now I've done everything from speaking at schools and, um, and encouraging kids with the real easy crossovers from um, overcoming physical obstacles and how to do that. I teach that in dingy gyms or teach people how to be healthy and to take care of their body or how to overcome a goal at school and say, hey, when you, when you take your homework and you go home and you get it done, you bring it back, you turn it in, you achieved a goal. You had a goal, I gotta do this, you went home, you did it, you worked on that and you finished it. And every time you turn your homework is achieving a goal. That's the same thing when I go, I wanna make it up one of the salmon ladders or something like that, one of our obstacles, I set a goal and I can do that. And uh, it's, it's highly relatable, the, the topic of Ninja Warrior, because I've even used it to, to do seminars on um, togetherness and uh, teamwork in, in businesses and um, me and Nick have spoken together, uh, speaking about cultural and using our influence in our culture and our community, and which I love being with Nick when we go to uh, his home village and we spoke there, where we're speaking to these kids and encouraging them to do amazing in their athletics because it's a great outlet for them where they need positive outlets. And we go, we get that. We are athletes too. And in that being an athlete, be a good student. Um, and, and X, Y, Z, other things we can say, hey, we're like you and whatever. And I see his impact be so real in a real group where they're like, whoa, it's so awesome because we go other places and people are like, Island Ninja, we go into his villages and other villages he goes to, they don't care about me. They care <laughs> about Nick because they see Nick and they go, he's one of us. He does what, he grew up like me. He looks like me. He's acted like me. And so I know my reach is really important. And so I use that as, uh, as to so many avenues, um, but I also speak about, I'm, I'm a Christian, so I use it for my faith and, and encourage people um, in their faith and, um, and, and that whole other avenue of things. So it really, the brush, the, the brush sweeps wide, um, but I also, I use my social media to encourage people just to have fun and to laugh. And um, instead of making maybe all the political statements on my social media, where uh where you could and i'm not saying that's wrong or right i just take that platform to speak and, and bring joy to people's lives which i think is also important so okay one more one more last question i know i said that was it but i just i can't get enough of you two you really do someone suggested you guys need to go on a program or something together the two of you so both of you both of you guys live in paradise right one in alaska and one in hawaii these are amazing places in the world that everybody should visit and you guys are ambassadors as well for your areas and you're probably traveling at least you were before covid um with now with your new fame and we are all getting a little bit stir crazy hunkering down so inspirations on where to travel what is on each of your bucket list of where you want to travel anywhere in the world once this all gets back to normal. Oof. Bro, we were just, weren't we just talking about this? Weren't we just texting each other about this, bro? <laughs> well, I also want to ask you, this is Daniel Gill, the Keith Ninja, oh, no. one of the other Ninja Warriors here. <laughs> he, uh, he just showed up, I thought I'd just pull him in. I'm rocking his shirt. Oh, represent. Wow, um, a, you're a definitely bonus special guest, you guys. Monday. 
next Monday on NBC at eight. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll have him chime if you want to answer this to you or you can hop back. I just wanted to give you a big smile. Okay. Out there. Um, but yeah, so uh, Nick, do you want to start with the trial spot? I can, I can get one in mine or, or Danny, you got one in mine right now? We're talking yeah, about I got, where I'll, we I'll, start, I'll kick us off. I'll kick us off, bro. Um, we'll make it quick because I know we had a one o'clock time. So we'll, we'll try to make this as quick as we can. By the way, uh, Daniel Gill was second in the world last year. He got to climb the rope and he made it to the top and he hit the buzzer at the top. So he is the one of the strongest people in the world. So, uh, wow, what a special, extra special guest we got to have with you. Also, he's got the best smile and the best hair on the planet. So um, <laughs> just want to make sure that everyone knows that. Um, no, traveling for me, um, I'll, I'm going to be honest with you guys. Um, I don't have a destination in mind. Like the destination for me is not what really matters to me. It's the okay. who I get to spend it with. Um, so the who I get to spend it with is what really matters to me. So when COVID's over, I'm looking at two faces that I want to spend time with right now after COVID's over. But I also have my girlfriend, Joanne, that's back at home in Unilocleat that I would want to be with us as we go on these trips and obviously Abby. Um, but then like um, that's that's really what matters to me is who I get to spend that trip with. So if we went to China, if we went to Italy, if we went to Europe, Paris, you know, Sweden, whatever, and, you know, if we got to go check out the Hobbit holes, whatever it is that we got to go do, as long as I got to spend it with family and friends, that would be the most, you know, that would be the place I want to go. Ah, oh, so well said, bro. I'll hit the other end of it because Avi, that is the right answer. Um, and Dan, you have any spot in mind just off the top of your head where you'd want to see in the world you haven't ever been? Gosh, uh, I love Europe. Europe, Europe and boom, Asia. Bango. What places. part? Anywhere? Anywhere. Anywhere in Europe. Anywhere. All right. Well, I was a flight attendant for Hawaiian Airlines for seven years, and I've traveled a ton. So I wouldn't mind revisiting some places, but just to stir up the places idea, again, number one is get the right people because anywhere you go is going to be fun with the right people. Um, I would love to go back to uh, New Zealand. It's amazing. Uh, it's beautiful and like a different kind of beautiful. Um, I would love to go back to um, some specific places in Europe. I'd love to go back to France. Um, the, the culture there is awesome. I speak Spanish, so I'd love to go back to Spain and travel around through there. Um, I hear a lot about Greece and Italy. Uh, apparently, I'm 20% Italian too, so I'm leaning into it. I got a chain. I got a chain now, so I'm super Italian. Um, so I'd love to go there. I think that's, I've never been to Italy. That's where I'd like to go and uh, eat some and gain some weight, you know, what, why I know. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. We're gonna close this up as I'm doing my closing comments. Please uh, continue in the chat function. Tell us where you wanna travel around the world. All those places sound amazing. I can't wait to start traveling again. A huge thank you to the incredible Nick Hansen, our Alaska ninja, and also to you, Grant McCartney and Daniel. Thanks for joining. We're so glad to have all three of you here today to talk about this topic. And thank you everyone for taking time out of your busy day to join the Alaska World Affairs Council. We really appreciate your support and being able to bring programs like this to the world, our Alaskans. Nick, you are such a great ambassador for our state and for our country. And so we're just thrilled that we were able to do this. I hope to see everybody again soon. We have a lot of programs coming up with the Alaska World Affairs Council. Go to our website at alaskaworldaffairs.org. And we hope to see you, Grant and Daniel, at one of our programs now with Zoom. You can come from anywhere. You can be sitting in Houston or Greece or Italy or Europe and join the Alaska World Affairs Council. So we hope to see you all again and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Yep, take care guys. Thank you so much. Aloha you guys. Great to see everyone's face. <laughs>